Welcome back. We are still on covalent bonding. We have tackled the four focal points of each type of bonding and uh, covalent bonding. We have looked at the nature and formation of covalent bond. We have looked at the lattice, uh, units of current lattice site. We have looked at intermolecular forces. We have also looked at examples of these. We are here to look at the physical properties. But I'm saying that before we look at the physical properties, of course, we need to understand certain terminologies or certain types of covalent characteristics associated with bonds before we can apply it to the physical properties. Because physical properties are things that we see with our naked eye, things that occur naturally that we have measured. And so we need to explain them. So before we can explain them, we need to understand these concepts. Now, in the, uh, as, as, as a summary of what we have studied so far, we have mentioned that for covalent compounds, Basically, we are studying around two things, two types of covalent compounds. The simple or molecular covalent substances and the giant covalent substances. Giant covalent substances, we mention them, we know them, and so once we are able to isolate them, then all the others are what? Uh, uh, molecular covalent substances. Giant covalent substances, we mentioned diamond, we mentioned graphite, we mentioned graphite, which is here, and then we mentioned silica. Silica, I didn't show you the structure. This is the structure of silica. That is silicon 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 in the middle so one silicon here sio2 is one molecule sio2 is one molecule sio2 is one molecule all of them wherever you go you see that they are all showing one molecule but you cannot differentiate between one mole and another mole they are joined together all by the same type of bond which is what covalent and here you see like this you see that the bond covalent bonds look like a net or a network that's why we call them network of covalent bonds Silicon, the one I'm holding in the middle here, this to this is one molecule, this to this is one molecule, or this to this is one molecule, or here to here is one molecule. In all, all the bonds there, this, that, that, that are all covalent bonds. But if I'm isolating the molecules, I would just circle this and say that is one molecule. From here to here is one molecule. So that I'll be considering only this silicon, that bond, that bond, forming one molecule. But they are joined to another molecule by this and that okay that's another molecule so this and this to this may look at this this being intermolecular or somebody can view this and that and say the bond here and here is intermolecular so whether intermolecular or intramolecular they are the same bonds and the way they are arranged arranged in the form of a network so we say the intermolecular forms a network of covalent bonds or giant interlocking covalent bonds my brother, my sister, what I want you to mention that what is the intermolecular force of giant covalent substances? The word covalent must appear. That is where your one point to be given to you. Don't go and say they are interlocking bonds. Don't go and say they are giant bonds. If the word covalent doesn't come, you lose your mark. That is it. So that is silica and that is diamond. All the others are simple covalent. All these, this is uh, ammonia, this is carbon dioxide, this is water, this is methane. They are all examples of uh, molecular covalent substances. So today we are going to introduce this new term, dative, or some call it coordinate covalent Yes, what is it? You see that the word covalent is there. We have described covalent, which means that definitely there's going to be some sharing of electrons. But the word dative there, to me, I wasn't too good in English, but at least for this one, I remember that anything that can before it describes it is what? An adjective. So an adjective added to the covalent bond. So the word dative is what we are going to explain here. The dative simply means here in chemistry that there will be sharing of electrons, but this time the electrons are not contributed by the two atoms. The electrons are fully donated by only one of the atoms that will take part in the bond. But if an atom is going to donate its electrons, it means that the atom must have the excess electrons by itself. So the atom is already in a, in, a, in, a, in a bond. It has free or mobile electrons, what we call the non-bonding electrons. It will donate. And where do electrons reside? Electrons cannot just move around. They will have to go and reside in a certain orbital. So the other atom to have three orbitals. That's the condition. I am bringing my gary. You must bring your bow. You pour into it. 
and then we share. So a dative covalent bond is a bond in which the shared pair electrons are donated by only one of the bonded species containing one or more lone pair electrons and is donated into the empty orbitals of the other bonded species. Do you understand that? Atom A is going to donate the electrons. First, it must have the electrons. So it has one or more lone pair electrons. Remember, we have defined lone pair electrons saying that, that electrons that don't take part in bonding. They are idle, sitting there, but it can be used in bond formation later. So, I, being the donor who donate the electrons, I have the uh, electron pair into the empty orbitals of the other atom who must also have that free orbital or empty orbital. When it goes into it, we come and then we share. When we share, you have your octet or duplet fold, I have my octet or duplet fold. That is dative covalent bonding. So here, you see, covalent bond, sharing of electrons, but dative simply means that one is the donor, one is the acceptor, and then they share. So the definition of dative covalent bonding is that it is a type of covalent bond in which the shared pair of electrons are donated by only one of the bonded species contain one or more lone pair electrons into the empty orbitals of the other bonded species. That is dative covalent bonding. Let's see examples of it. How does it occur? Let me take the compound hydrozonium. This is the compound. It will be written like this. And your, the question will be that explain the types of bonding, all the types of bonding in this compound. In this compound here, if I break it down, it is simply a bond between water okay plus a hydrogen that had lost its electrons and therefore and therefore it was a plus that is why we still have the plus on this so when water is forming before water is formed how does the electrons uh, how, the, how are the electrons shared remember that oxygen has six electrons in the atom shell so it used to be one two uh, four and then six here okay these were the electrons six electrons outside oxygen atom. So what did oxygen do? Oxygen used this one electron here and forming a bond with hydrogen that had that one electron. That's the one electron here. It used another electron here to form a bond with another hydrogen atom. They deformed them. So oxygen was left with these four electrons, which in pairs we say it had two lone pair electrons. So if oxygen has two lone pair electrons, this and that, and it has formed this. After forming this, it is it has full is octet. It is satisfied. Hydrogen had one electron. It has shared with this. It is now having to duplet fold. This hydrogen duplet fold. But this hydrogen ion here has lost its electron. So its one s uh, here, the one s orbital will be free. One s zero. It has lost the electron. So the orbital there, the s orbital is free. Or we see the k shell is what free because it has only one uh, shell. That is the k. And within the k, it has only one orbital, which is the s. 1s. So once it has lost that electron, it means that there is no electron in there. Listen. So this water molecule with lone pair on the oxygen will donate this into the empty orbital of the hydrogen ion. So when it does that and they share, the hydrogen, this hydrogen, this uh, uh, hydrogen here will assume the two electrons. It will be satisfied. Okay. But because there was plus there, you still put the plus there. So hydrogen molecule, a hydrogenium ion, that is how it is formed. The lone pair electrons here donated to the empty orbital of the 1s orbital of hydrogen. That is the first example. So example one is this. Example two, we have ammonium ion. This examples I'm using here will always find expression in your question paper. So take, a, take a care of them. Okay? They will ask you to explain the type of bonds. Ammonium ion. If I break it down, I have it is ammonia okay nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So it is ammonia plus a hydrogen ion. So in the first case, if you are asked to describe the bonds, let me summarize that. I forgot to summarize it. In the first case, the hydrozone, we are asked to describe the bonds. You say 
there is covalent bond there is covalent bond between oxygen and the first two atoms in water and then the bond between water and a hydrogen ion is dative covalent bond covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen atoms in water and there is a third bond between water and hydrogen ion which is a dative covalent bond in the same sense here when we come here it will just be written the molecule will just be written as this nh4 plus so here again we explain that there is a covalent bond between three hydrogen atoms and nitrogen as they share again nitrogen is in group five what is it it has one and five letters in that room say one two three four five that is nitrogen so before the bond was formed and then hydrogen also has one so before this bond was formed what was the sharing the sharing was hydrogen one nitrogen one from this bond so this hydrogen becomes satisfied duplet here nitrogen one hydrogen one this hydrogen becomes satisfied duplet the same thing happens here this hydrogen and this nitrogen will form a bond by contributing one electron each that is covalent bond so now nitrogen assume one two three four five six seven and eight so this two electrons here on the nitrogen are the lone pair electrons the electrons that do not take part in the uh, in the bond formation or in the sharing so this nitrogen here in ammonia has a lone pair electron on it so this this nitrogen has a lone pair electron in it okay now again here this hydrogen has lost its electron so it is 1s0 1s0 so this nitrogen can have pity on the hydrogen ion and donate the two electrons or the electron pair into the 1s orbital and after that they share now after that when they share you no more have ammonia but you have what you call an ammonium ion okay and usually when it happens like this and the fourth bond comes in the structure of this will change here too again the structure will do what change in the case of the water the structure was water the structure was as we see it here that is water v-shape oxygen hydrogen hydrogen but when it forms hydrozonium it changes another bond will come there so in the case of the water it will now come and assume the former ammonia structure it will become oxygen hydrogen hydrogen and then we have the other hydrogen on top again here this this one will become now four bonds so to become similar to methane tetrahedral structure it becomes similar to methane so when this four bond is formed you have nitrogen have one there there so each one will be hydrogen 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 but prior to that this prior to that the ammonia here would have also assumed the hydrozonium structure okay i think no this is pyramidal eh? i think it's uh oxygen oxygen will be this because it will still have one more lumpe it will still have one more lumpe which will be sitting on top here you was say there'll be this lone pair was the one that was donated it still has one more lone pair so that will occupy that space so that we have hydrogen 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 so that is hydrozonium structure ammonia structure is also like that here ammon this is ammonium so the ammonia forms before it then forms a bond with the hydrogen ion so this lone pair donated to the into the one s orbital of the hydrogen will then form a bond so now the ammonium ion will look like this a tetrahedral structure so we have this that and that and then the plus sign will be there one of the hydrogens will still have the plus sign so these are two examples i can give some more examples and all these are examples of dative covalent bond
Let's look at this molecule. BH3. I want to show you that there's some empty orbital there. And so it can also come and form a bond with water. In other words, it can accept low pair from water. Remember water, we have always proved that it has two lone pair of electrons. I want to show you that this compound has has a has a, an empty orbital so it can form a bond with uh, water let's see how it is from boron is five isn't it one s2 two s2 two p one isn't it or if you want to use the the k shell type of this thing if you have two p one remember the p has the x y and z if i spread this if I spread this P, this one is only in this electron. So this and that are there empty. So how did boron form a bond with this? Boron has that three. This is atom shell. This is atom shell. Or if I did it in the KL types of uh, configuration, I have K2, which is this. Then I have L what? Three, isn't it? So if I have L3, it is telling me that the L can take five more electrons. How can it take the five more electrons? It can take five more electrons because those empty orbitals are in it. They are just there. So boron, I'm going to form this compound with hydrogen. Use these electrons, the two here, the one here, to form the bonds. So boron would have been one two and then let's say three so hydrogen comes so they form this bond they form this bond they form this bond so you get a compound ba3 you think that is okay but when you form the ba3 is it fully satisfied no it has assumed six electrons there now but the duplet is not fully filled okay they will still have some empty orbitals there. So water sitting here can then come and donate these two lone pair of electrons into the empty orbital of boron. So they form a compound like this. We just write it as H2O dot BH3. Okay. So this is a compound that can indicate as the bond existing between them. This lone pair here existing between them being uh, a dative covalent bond a dative covalent bond other examples that you can show again if i don't use water i can also use ammonia the same thing because ammonia also have a lone pair that can donate it so in your questions if you see examples of this and they put it there and ask you to demonstrate or illustrate or explain the types of bonds that exist them within one molecule explain the covalent bond the shadow of electrons then identify that Dative covalent bond in there. The examples that they, they can give you are all the examples that we have illustrated on the board. Hydrozonium, ammonium ion. Sometimes, be careful. If they don't show this, they combine this with chlorine, ammonium chloride. Where chlorine is just a minus. So, first you, you break it down. The bond between this and that is ionic because of the plus and the minus. That is ionic. And when you come within here, you say, Nitrogen and three hydrogens are equivalent. And ammonia, don't say nitrogen and the H plus. Say ammonia and the other H plus is also what? Dative equivalent bond. So watch out this compound. If you don't see this, you can, you can also see water. Let me put BX3. My S could be chlorine, it could be fluorine, it could be hydrogen, or it could be anything. Okay? The X here, it could be boron, boron bonding with hydrogen or any of the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine. If they don't use water to do, use ammonia. BX3, that is ammonia here, the bond will exist there. Where it will be the ammonia that has donated the electron pair into the empty orbital of the boron. In place of the boron, you can also see beryllium. So in other words, we have these two compounds, 
be one some of the examples or you can change them as water dot dot b e this time this will be x2 beryllium will form two not three or ammonia dot dot b e x2 these are the examples why because beryllium is four it can also show the same thing and form bonds too beryllium is atomic number four it is 1s2, 2s2. The fact that this is what we see as the atom shell doesn't mean that the p orbital is not there. The whole of the p orbital is there, empty. So it can use it to accept electrons to do anything with it. Okay? Beryllium, atom number 4, has two electrons occupying the 1s orbital in the inner shell. Then two electrons occupying only the s orbital in the outer shell. But the p orbital, we can take six electrons, are all lying idle. So any substance or any species that has a lone pair to come and donate and share with it, it will readily make available its p orbital to share with it. Chemistry is a fun game. Everything that we find in nature has an explanation. And that is what we are doing here. We are explaining to you why when you form B, when you form BX2 compounds, here I'm, I've defined my X saying either it's hydrogen or a halogen. If you form this compound, it can always go and form a bond with water. By, low, by additive covalent bond the same way you can form a bond with ammonia why because the ammonia has the lone pair electron to donate and the beryllium in the bx2 in the bex2 or the beryllium in the bh2 has lone pair electrons so that is dative covalent bonding okay that is dative covalent uh, bonding so i guess uh, we will talk more about all these things what we discuss the next major topic which we call hybridization uh, to show i mean i'll let you know how the the orbitals are interchanging and, and uh, arrange electrons moving to each other to form the various bonds we'll do that in hybridization hybridization is a further explanation of covalent bonding as we are doing now so come with me to the next video we are ending here in our next video we are going to look at polar covalent bonds and ampolar covalent bonds. We are going to use all this to explain some physical properties.